I'm Carol O'Mara, horticulture entomologist with Colorado State University Extension here in Boulder County. We're getting out and taking a look at our fruit trees now that the weather is warming up. And today, what we want to take a look at are our apple trees. Apples are one of the most popular backyard fruits that we have in our yards. And caring for them is pretty carefree as long as you know what to look for when you go out to clean them out in the spring. The most important thing that you can do is train yourself to recognize the difference between the buds that are going to be in flower and those that are going to produce a woody shoot. Let's show you the difference. When looking at your branches, if you see these smaller buds that are arrowhead shaped, maybe they have a lot of scales on them and they're held tight to the branch, these are woody shoots. All that's going to grow from this are new twigs and leaves to help the tree get larger and photosynthesize. Other buds, like this one, are very plump, they're furry, they're held proud from the branch. This is a flowering bud. This is going to be where the tree will produce fruit. Knowing the difference between the two will help you learn to make your pruning cuts at the right point on the tree for best growth. These are really young apple trees and if you have a little tree in your yard, here's a couple of tips. If it's a fully dwarf tree, you don't have to worry about pruning it too much, especially you don't have to worry about trying to shape it into these open vase type uh, forms or any of the other really heavy prune type of trees. Little dwarves, they just need a light touch. So when you get out there, what you look for are the three Ds, dead, diseased, or damaged limbs, and those are the ones that you take off in spring. And the rest of the plant, you leave alone. Now, if you've put in a tree that is a semi-dwarf, one that's going to get well above 10 feet in height, maybe 10 to 20 feet tall, you do have to work with it a little bit to keep that size in check. But on apple trees, here's a trick. They need older wood to form their flowering spurs. On these spurs, that's where the fruit is going to be formed. So having looked at the difference in the buds before, you'll know that there's a difference in the type of buds that this growing shoot is producing. You can see here, there are those small arrowhead shoots. These are the ones that are all going to be devoted to growth of the tree, not worrying about flowering. But if you look further back into the tree here, you can see we have a lot of these stubby growths here. These little flower buds that are being produced. And as they get older, they form what we call spurs. Spurs are parts of the tree like this, where it looks like compressed stem, and that's exactly what it is. Once this tree has started flowering, the little stems behind the flowers only get minutely longer each year. They don't get very long, and all of a sudden your tree is going to start to look a little bit knobby. But that's perfect on an apple tree. We want three-year-old wood or older for them to produce fruit on. So what we're doing is we're coming out on all of our trees and we're standing back and we're taking a look to see if we have any branches that need clipping off. As a reminder, the type of tools that you want to use on branches this size is going to be these bypass pruners. They're the ones where the blades come completely past one another for a clean cut. And as long as the twigs and the branches that we're working with are less than a half an inch in diameter, this is the ideal tool. Larger than this and we're going to have to break out the loppers. So as we look at this tree, Here's a branch right away that's causing some concern. Yes, it might have been fruiting for us last year, but the angle here is so narrow that once that heavy fruit starts hanging off of the branch, it's going to pull this out and possibly snap it off at this point. What looking for is to select for branches that have a wider open angle between the branch and the tree. Ideally, we want it to be between 45 and 60 degrees. So, we're going to take this little one off just outside the branch collar with a simple snip and there we have it. Other than that, we're going to take a look at any of the branches that might be crossing or branches that are downward growing. If a branch is held out at 90 degrees or it starts growing towards the ground, you want to get that branch off of there or raise it up slightly. 
Anything that's growing down towards the ground is not going to produce fruit for you. The fruiting type of branches that we have coming off of these little trees all go upwards, 60 degrees and all the way vertical if you need it to. Now, anytime you go to make a pruning cut on a branch where you're not taking the whole thing off, maybe you're just taking off a part of it to help stimulate the tree to form side branches or to get more fruiting spurs, the one thing to pay attention to is what direction that bud is going to grow in once you've made your pruning cut. Pruning is a stimulus, so when we take it off here, these side buds are going to start elongating out. So what we want to do is make sure that none of these branches grow back in towards the center of the tree, because we're trying to leave that open for air circulation and sunlight. We want the topmost bud to grow out and away from the tree so we don't run into any crossing branch problems later. As you can see here, moving back down this branch that I want to take back by about one third, an outward growing bud is exactly where we want to make this cut. And we want to cut just a quarter inch above this bud in order for it to be stimulated to grow. So we cut it at a 45 degree angle in the same direction as the bud. So the bud's over here and the angle of the pruner goes in the same direction and we're cutting it just above that bud at a 45 degree angle like this. Now this top bud is going to take off and it's going to grow out and away from the tree. These other side buds, they're going to be stimulated now to also elongate out since we've taken off the terminal bud at the tip of the branch. That's how you clean up a little fruit tree. Let's take a look at some of the needs of some of our more mature trees in the landscape. If you have an older apple tree, one that hasn't really been worked with in a while, perhaps you just moved in and inherited it with the house, or perhaps you just haven't gotten out there and worked with it. If that tree is starting to give you apples that are getting smaller in size, maybe they don't taste so good, or perhaps it's not giving you apples at all, you might want to consider opening this tree up with a little bit of pruning. There are a couple of things to look at with an older apple tree, and the most important thing that you can do for your first step in a tree renovation is to take a look down at the base of the tree. The way these trees are, they throw a lot of these suckers down here. And they come up from the ground. These are not healthy growth. This just is generally a nutrient sink. These just pour their um, energy into growing quickly and without a lot of fruit. If left on its own, maybe a couple of them will form into large trees over time. But in general, these are considered phenomenally unhealthy to keep around the base of your tree. And it is one of those jobs that takes quite a while. So you just keep whacking at it to get all these suckers out of the way. You want to lift your eyes to the branches and the trunks themselves. Take a look to see what you have with you. In this case, this tree, most of the trunks are alive and we're lucky in that regard. It doesn't need a lot of work. But if you have a really, really old tree with trunks that are dead and big branches, go ahead and take those out. You might need to hire an arborist. Any branch that's over four inches in diameter should really be removed by a pro instead of by a homeowner just because of the amount of weight that's involved and the danger in taking it down. Now, as they get older, the spurs still elongate. Remember, it's that compressed stem. But every year, they do get a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Eventually, you're going to have systems like this one, where you have a series of a whole bunch of spurs. And they're all long, but they're all crowded tightly into one another. What this does is it means that the tree, when it's fruiting, has fruit that's too crowded together. And it can't size up properly. Or insects really like to lay their eggs in that area. So what you want to do is you want to thin the spurs out a little bit. So you go back in here and you start looking at which spur could be shortened a little bit by cutting them off partly or you can take them all the way back. Tree, start looking at some of the branches if you were going to save the whole section here. Some of these in the middle are the ones that I would start working with to try and take out in that first season. Maybe one or two of the larger branches, no more, because again, I don't want to remove more than about 15 to 20% of this old tree. I'm Carol O'Mara, helping you garden.